All right, what I want to do here is show you a package that I just created called Per Plus. This is a package that's meant to extend the Tidyverse, specifically the Per package, in a way that I found myself wanting, the functionality I found myself wanting over and over again. So the first thing, I've already done this, but if you want to, um, and also this is sort of an alternative to walking through the README, um, which is on the GitHub page, Stenhouse slash per plus. Um, I find learning through YouTube videos sometimes more useful. So to install it, you run this line of code. I've already done it. It takes a minute to run, um, depending on how much of the dependency packages you ha already have installed. But to really get going, we're gonna load the package, and then we're also gonna load the tidyverse. Um, per plus is meant to extend the tidyverse, so it's, it's, gonna be, um, it's gonna make the most sense if we actually have um, the tidyverse there. Now, to show you what's what I want to have happen, I'm gonna, you have an example function. And this function's much simpler than I think what <laughs> most people would do. And I'll t try to talk at the end of how I think this is useful beyond the simple example, but first I want you to understand what's going on. So calculate if positive is a function that will return a bunch of things if the numbers are positive, but if they're not, it's gonna to fail to run. So let's just look at an example. So if I do two and three, it returns those two numbers added, a subtraction, multiply two times three, two divided by three. So if, pos if both are positive, it's gonna calculate something. But if both of them aren't positive, I'm gonna to start to get errors. And this is the case that we're trying to work through is cases where we're potentially going to get errors, but sometimes we're going to get good results. And so I have this data frame. Called numbers and we can look at it. And so inside numbers, we have an A column, a B column and an irrelevant column. And the whole idea with per and the map functions is we should be able to take and go row by row and apply a function. So here, notice that calculate if positive takes A and B. I wanna go row by row and apply this function. So here um, on the first row, that's actually not gonna work. It's gonna throw an error because they're not both positive. The second row, it will work um, and we should get a solution. The third row, it will work. We should get a solution. And the fourth row, it's going to throw an error. And so I'm trying to think about how can I work with that sort of thing. So let me show you the old way, the way without my package, without per plus. Here you might say, you might do a pmap. You might take numbers and do a pmap um, of calculate if positive. And what this problem is telling us is it's trying to pass this data frame numbers um, into, and it's trying to go row by row and apply this function calculate if positive. The problem it's saying is unused argument irrelevant. What's happening is we have a third column numbers irrelevant that does that is calculate if positive doesn't do anything with it, and so it throws an error. So one possibility is. We can get rid of it. And so now we're able to get rid of the column. Now we're getting a different error. We're getting just the first number is negative. And so what's happening is it's trying to go row by row and apply this function. And it gets to the first row and it says it can't work. So it throws an error and it stops. And the ideal behavior we would want is to catch that error right here, make a new column, catch the error. And then go on and try it here, get this solution. Go and try it here, get the solution. Go on and try it in the fourth row, get the solution. But with the current way with PMAP, it just fails immediately. And so what we can do, um, Hadley and the Tidyverse and, and folks like that have come up with this safely, which does exactly this. It, so it will safely will store the error, not throw the error if it happens, and it'll keep going. And so if I show you this, um, I, I get, well, let me save the output so you can see what happens. So it works. Let's look at output. Actually, glimpses a little bit better. 
So this worked. Now, the problem is when you use this PMAP in the safely, the output is a list. But really what I wanted to do is I wanted just another column here for the results and maybe another column here for the errors. And so this, this, this is really hard to think about. Uh, we have four results. We have errors stored. We've got, it's just, it's just really is a mess. I could try to convert it to a data frame if I wanted to get better. And then I could look at maybe what's the first element of output. Um, and it's, it's in this very funky format where it goes results and then gives me some different, it's, it's, it's just messy. It's, it's not what I want. So let me show you what perplus allows us to do. Um, perplus, the, the premier function in perplus is uh, pmap safely. So here I did pmap safely, but the output was in this very funky, hard to, to understand way. Well, let me instead, feed my data frame, recall, let's pull up numbers so you can see. Let's feed it into PMAP safely. And so this is the function that I've created as part of perplus, the PMAP underscore safely. And if I do that, I get exactly what I was hoping to get. It's applied it row by row, and it's stored the error when there is one. It tells me what the error is. and of course, when there's an error, there can't be a result. But when there is a result, it stores um, the result as a list of four. Um, and, and remember the four, the four things. They're the two numbers added, the two numbers subtracted, the two numbers multiplied, the two numbers divided. So I can save it. Um, and it, I, it, it throws these nice little messages. Um, so does not use the following variables irrelevant. This is to just warn you and remind you that numbers um, had a variable that was irrelevant. <laughs> it actually was titled irrelevant in this case, and it lets you know. So then after you've done that, PMAP safely comes with a couple of other functions. So if I wanted to just get the errors, this is if I wanted to do a big error analysis. And this would say, um, if I was trying to break down what variable, if I didn't know what the cause of the different errors were and I wanted to figure out associations, maybe I'm applying this to a huge simulation. I'm not sure which parameters are causing my simulation to not converge and it ends up throwing an error. And here's what it says is when variable A takes value negative one, that happens once and that happens once, that's the count, and there's one error. And so the error rate's 100%. You can see that when a is negative one, it's always an error. Now let's look at when, um, let's look at when irrelevant um, is Minneapolis. That throws an error one of two times. And you can go down, you can see irrelevant Minneapolis, there's an error one of two times, um, which is great. Then there's, we can also add specific equals true. And it will tell me actually the actual error that gets thrown um, for the variable, for the variable, and and the value, and and that ends up being very very useful um, to be able to see both the the the, the error and um, what what ends up happening. Um, and so then the last thing is, and what you're probably going to want to do once you feel comfortable with that the results. Um, that the errors are sort of understandable and maybe you're okay with the errors, but you just want to get get the results that actually did work because if you remember Here's what it looks like. I might just particularly be interested in when the results um, worked after I take a look at the errors and do a little bit of an error analysis and so now What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do output goes to get results and What this is gonna do is work with this list. So right now. Let me show you output dollar result um, to, so I'm gonna peek inside here, and it's gonna be the solution that add, subtract, divide, multiply, divide. And that's hard to get at when it's stored inside a list inside of this output data frame. And so what running output through get results is actually gonna turn each of these, it's gonna remove rows with errors, and then it's gonna turn each of these lists into a column. Um, which I find super useful. And it adds an underscore result so that you can know that it's the, the result is um, stored and subsequently you can know which ones were the inputs and which ones were the results.